This last video just gives you a few uh, tips and tricks for uh, how to navigate keeping a quiz question open in Canvas and using Excel to make sure that you're understanding what the questions are asking you. So let's say that you're taking the quiz and the question asks you um, to insert a column in between columns B and C. And then it asks you, where does that new column go? What's the letter for that new column going to be? What we don't expect you to be able to do is to memorize that information and just spit it back out at the drop of a hat. We expect you to just have Excel open and then you're able to use the skills that you're learning to just go ahead and do that quick action in Excel and then see what happens and then report the right answer. So if the question says, what happens if you are um, highlighting a cell in uh, column C and then you right click and you insert a column? Where is that new column going? Now it's in cell or it's in column C, and your old column C is now in column D. And so you're just doing that quick action um, and then reporting what happens. Let's say that um, you're trying to put years uh, from 2011 through 2018 down um, some column in the data using the fill function. And the question says, if you put 2011 in that first cell and then you drag down five cells, what's in the fifth cell? Well, you can just go ahead and do it in Excel. So you put that number in, you grab the little fill button down at the bottom, you drag it down five cells, uh, and then what's in that fifth cell? It's 2011 again. Why? It's because when you're using the fill function, Excel needs to be able to recognize that there's a pattern there. And if you only put in 2011, then you've not given it enough information to understand the pattern that you're putting in years one after the next. What if instead of just putting in 2011, I put in 2011 and 2012, I highlight that and I want to fill uh, five different cells. I grab this, I pull down, and then boom. Excel managed to recognize the pattern and it went down to 2015 like I was hoping that it would. So when a quiz question asks you to do that kind of a function in Excel, you can just have it open, give it a shot really quick, and then report what happens. Uh, same thing when you're using something like the freeze panes function. So freeze panes, um, I want maybe this first row to stay still and I want this first column to stay still so that no matter where I'm scrolling around in my spreadsheet, I'm always going to be able to see that first row and that first column. So how can I do that? Well, I just click the cell um, that I want to be the first one that's moving around. So everything to the left of it and everything above it is going to be frozen. And I just click the freeze panes button. What about just clicking the freeze top row button? Hey, that works. The top row is not moving. What if I just say freeze first column? Well, it looks like now the first column's not moving, but my first row is again. Why isn't that working? Well, I'll use the freeze paints button to freeze the top row and the first column. So which cell do I click? Is it this first one? Let me try it. Freeze panes. Hey, weird. I don't know what happened here, but that's definitely not what I was hoping would happen. So I just unfreeze. What if I click this one here? So now I've got one row above that cell, one column to the left, freeze panes. Uh, I'm scrolling down. Hey, what happened? Freeze panes. There we go. I'm scrolling down. That first row stays still. I'm scrolling over. That first column stays still. That worked out great. Awesome. Trial and error. You have Excel open for your uh, convenience while you're taking the quiz. I strongly recommend when a quiz question asks you what happens in Excel if you do this, just give it a shot in Excel uh, and then report what you see.